Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and we're live from HP Discover. This is day two for theCUBE, day three for HP Discover. Uh, yesterday we heard Meg, Meg Whitman give her great keynote. Today, Dave Donatelli was up on stage. We had Dave Donatelli yesterday on theCUBE. A lot of action on cloud. Meg Whitman, you know, gave a lot of love to cloud. I was happy to see that. It was really a good, strong enterprise message. Um, and we're here with Pete Johnson, who is, works in the cloud organization. Developer experience is really uh, your main focus. It is. Uh, it's, you're the public cloud side of HP's cloud strategy, right. so it makes sense that you're trying to reach out to developers. Um, I said off camera, that's where all the action is. Well, certainly that was, that's where all the action was at the beginning of cloud, right? Certainly. It was the developer audience that, uh, that really was going after that. But, so first of all, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks. Thanks for coming on. So, um, so yeah, so let's start with HP's cloud strategy. A lot of people don't really have not you know, heard about it, don't sure. fully understand it. So why don't we start with that? What is HP's cloud strategy? So the idea and what we've, the, the tagline we've given into it is converged cloud. And fundamentally what it's about is choice. Uh, so the diagram that typically gets put up on the far left is, is like the dedicated, traditional, uh, on-premise hosted experience. And you might be running some private cloud software on that to help in increase your utility that you have there. In the middle, you might have what we call the, the managed cloud, where it's not on your premise, it's in an HP Trade data center somewhere, and you might have some private cloud there to help with uh, your deployments and utility there. And on the far right is typically where you see us, the public cloud, where if, if you're a, a smaller house or uh, an SMB or an individual developer, you might be exclusively on that HP cloud, but for bigger businesses that already have private cloud in either of those other two situations, you might need to burst in certain situations to, to public cloud to get some temporary capacity for your compute. Okay, so um, now you guys launched the Converge Cloud when? Um, the Converge Cloud message has been about a month or two old. Yeah, okay. So, so talk about the go-to-market for that. Um, how do you engage you know, with customers and where do you guys fit? Well, the public cloud part of it, there's, there's kind of two parts to that. We were talking off camera about this a little bit. Um, the, the two pawns that public cloud tries to keep in, we want to try to Im impress the IT manager while also I impressing the kid in the Stanford dorm who's inventing the next Foursquare. So, you know, we have a presence here at Discover to try to do that, to try to impress that traditional IT guy who is going to fit uh, more in that converged cloud with the bursting kind of scenario. We had a presence at South by Southwest as well. We're trying to engage with those individual developers. So Amazon got it all started, you know, uh, I don't know, what was it, 2000? Depends on how you want to count. Four, 2006. Four, six, yeah, somewhere in somewhere there, Somewhere yeah. in there, with EC2 and then S3 for their uh, object store. So a lot of people say, okay, that's great. Developers, no problem, spin it up. It's, uh, it's easy for a developer, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's fast. Um, but a lot of people aren't developers, number one. Number two, a lot of enterprises that we talk to say, well, that's great, but the SLAs aren't what we want. Sure. Um, they have other concerns like, can we go in and audit Amazon? Metrics, um, what's SLAs. A what's a security incident? Right. Can we get them to report based on our corporate edicts, how frequently they report? Um, what about geographic placement of data? Can right. we control that? Um, and you know the answer. The answer, sure. if, if you're an Amazon customer is, well, here's the agreement. If, if you want it, use it. If you have a problem, email us. Sure. <laughs> and uh, good luck. And that's cool. That worked. It's growing like crazy. But Absolutely it, it has. It's, it's, it's not appropriate for many enterprises. I presume that your strategy is to fill that void. Is that right? You, you just did a great commercial for what we're about, basically. Yeah. Okay, so. I mean, a, as a company, We've been building data centers as long as there's been such a thing as data centers. We've been working with Global 2000 accounts you know, for, for many, many years. Um, we understand what their needs are. Their needs, and a lot of times, are very similar to what our own internal needs are. And it's exactly the script that you just, you just wrote up. We, we feel like there's plenty of space out there to play in the public cloud, and that there's some things missing in that ecosystem today that we can fill based on our experience with those enterprise accounts. Okay, so obviously the other thing I want is pay as we go. I want to pay by the drink. Right. I don't want uh, you know a, a upfront capex. I don't want to pay maintenance. You sure. know, big big licenses. I don't want to be locked in. You're obviously, you're obviously addressing that problem, right? So yeah, like the lock model the lock in is actually a, a pretty big one for us, and one of the reasons why we chose OpenStack for our underlying uh, software infrastructure. Um, so if you're not familiar with OpenStack, it's an open source sure. software initiative initially uh, founded. Uh, um, 
by NASA and um, Rackspace, our yeah. friends at Rackspace. Yeah. Right, but now includes you know many dozens of HP companies. HP is the we're Dell, actually the, obviously. Is we've got the third. Cool. We're the third largest contributor right now in terms of number of developers uh, to OpenStack. Um, very involved in the roadmap process. In terms of HP's contribution to the open source. In terms platform. of number of heads, yes. Yeah. So you're 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 active contributors there. We committers, are. Active contributors and committers. Yeah. Very active. Uh, the way that OpenStack releases work, as you may know, is those happen every six week or every six months. Uh, to kick off a new development cycle, there's always a, a conference. Uh, there was the one uh, recently last month in San Francisco for the Pulsum release that's in development now that we're actively contributing to. So, one of the challenges that I think people have is um, squinting through the marketing, right? So, Larry Ellison says Oracle, the Oracle public cloud is open, right? And he, and he does a very compelling narrative on why they're more open than Salesforce. Right. You know? And you're sort of left scratching your head, saying, wow, everybody's open, I guess. Right. You know, so what is really open? Well, so why is HP more open than the other guy? Well, the, the key part of the open stack play as it relates to, to us is something that Donatelli talked about in the keynote, keynote this morning. N nobody's out there saying, please, lock me in. <laughs> I, I, I want to start using you and I never want you to let me go. Jack up my maintenance. Right? And <laughs> I mean, for, for public cloud, really where, the inter where, where your experience begins is at that REST API. Most people never see that. I work with that every day given the, the job that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, but the OpenStack APIs, our, the OpenStack APIs are the same across all OpenStack vendors. So in, in that case, if you, build, if you build your infrastructure and your software tools based on that API, you start off with us, you might choose to go somewhere else for a while and maybe come back, but because all the APIs are the same, you're not going to be locked into that. So to us, that's what that open really means. Uh, Pete, is, is, uh, is OpenStack ready for prime time? Well, we certainly, it's, cert if it's certainly get getting there. There are parts of it that are more advanced than others, obviously. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're placing major resources on that ourselves, and we, we like where it's going. So when you're open uh, cloud, your public cloud, uh, what are you doing for an object store? Is it Swift? It is Swift, yes. So, so what if, um, I don't even know if I can do this, but let's say, um, for whatever reason, you know, I don't want to use Swift, I want to use Nevonics, you know, or some other you know, object store. Right. Can I do that? Well, from a REST API perspective, that, that kind of veers away from what we see as being open. But what you would be able to do is go to any other vendor, like our friends at Rackspace, okay. that are also using OpenStack. That REST API for Swift, the REST API for Swift is the REST API for Swift, regardless okay. of who the vendor is. Right, so, so that's what I mean. It's by, agnostic to by what's open. behind it. Now yeah. there are, now we don't happen to have uh, compatibility API for, for Swift, but on the Nova, for the compute part of that, yeah, okay. uh, there is an EC2 compatibility API to help ease that burden of folks moving back and forth for that as well. Right, um, so, so, but OpenStack is the fundamental strategy. But OpenStack is the it. fundamental st strategy of what we're doing with Flutter. And, yes. and um, I guess Rackspace, and I guess the con Rackspace was sort of a controlling entity for a while, and now it's handed it to the community, right, about six yeah, months ago, I, and that I, was a big move. Yeah, it was a very big move, and I think, you know, the benefit that they've received out of it is now they have a much bigger community of folks that are actively contributing to it. So you see a much bigger diversity in the number of projects that are being worked on, and a much uh, larger number of areas, like things like network as a service, load balance as a service, um, other things that you know the initial OpenStack offering didn't have. And the developer community is is gaga over OpenStack. Oh, yeah. I have to say, I mean, when you go to these OpenStack events, the developer community is there in force. They get their T-shirts on, and oh, yeah. you know, there's a th there's real momentum. And that's a obviously developer developers are a leading indicator of adoption. Um, so that's a, a key point of it. So what specifically is HP doing to reach out to developers? What's that, you know, what are you doing to foster that whole devel developer experience? So, so part of that, and, and what the, the team I'm on focuses on, is making that experience for developers what they would want. Big part of our team that, that sits basically on top of those REST APIs to create the, 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 the customer experience. So for us, what my team works on is the, the web experience, the command line interfaces, the language bindings. Um, the hiring we did for that, we, we brought a ton of people from the outside that were working at smaller shops, uh, doing their own thing on, on Rails, uh, with PHP, and so forth, and brought, brought them in and said, build this to impress your friends. Build this for what it is you would want it to be. If you go to hpcloud.com today, you're going to find an experience that's very different than what you see on, on other HP properties. That's very intentional. 
that we're, we're trying to focus that in a way that's very, uh, very easy to consume for, for that uh, front-end developer who might be running uh, his own shop uh, or, or hanging out a shingle. What's the URL, Pete? It's hpcloud.com. hpcloud.com, yes. I don't know if if you can go there, but I'm going to go there now and see. So you're saying it's a different experience from the standpoint It is, of it looks very different from what you'd find on hp.com. It's yeah. complementary to what you would find on hp.com, uh, but it has a very different look and feel, and that's intentional. I mean, yeah, our, it's, got a, it's got an HP logo, and that's about it, right? I mean, our, our, this is our product to most people. I mean, we don't ship something in a box, you know, put something in a box and ship it to your home. When you use our product, this is your first entry into it. Using this and the command line interfaces, and like I said, the language bindings that you use to access the various services. Okay, so you've got a public beta, you can go sign up for that. Yes. Uh, you've got HP Compute, uh, a cloud compute, you've got the object store. Yep. Uh, you got a CDN, uh, you got block storage. Okay, yeah. so, uh, yeah, and so there's, a, there's, an, there's, an, there's an elastic block service analog within Swift, I mean, within uh, uh, OpenStack? Within OpenStack, yeah. Wh what is that called? Um, the, well, it's, it, right now it's formally part of Nova. Uh, they're talking yes, about, right, right, they're right, talking right, about right. splitting it out as a separate project, at yep. least that, that was a heated debate at the last uh, OpenStack uh, discussion. Yeah, and I know some of the SSD guys, I was talking to SolidFire guys, I don't know if you know them. They're no, a startup in the SSD space. They were obviously one of the ones pushing for that. Sure. Right, and wanting to contribute. Of course, they're a startup, so they don't have a lot of resources for that. Sure, but, but yeah, so there was healthy debate about that at the, the why, Folsom why, meetings. Why wouldn't you break that out of Nova? What was the essence of that debate? I mean, I don't want to get too yeah. academic about it, but you I'm know, just trying to understand the My, my job the starts at that REST API. Yeah. I'm, I'm not typically, you don't care. I'm too, not super involved in yeah. some of those underlying yeah. things. We have people that can answer that question for but you, I mean, as a, I, But I as, a, as, a, as a person you know, providing an offering, right. I would think you'd want that. I mean, I guess you do have it, okay? But yeah, so we do have it. It's so a matter you, of, is you, it formally part of the Nova project or does it spin off as so a So you package it as a separate offering so you can price it out separately. And that's really all you care about, yeah. right? Okay, and there may be some capabilities if it is separated out. And you've got relational database for MySQL and uh, identity services, which is, which is so security identity in the cloud. So identity services, that, that, um, that's based on the uh, OpenStack Keystone project, which is, is its yeah, own separate right. thing. Yep. And that's the uh, auth authentication and authorization that ties together all the other services. Early in the days of, of OpenStack, because the, the compute and the object storage came from different places, uh, you had to authenticate separately with each service. Keystone uh, makes it so that you log in to Keystone and then all the other services you can then begin to work with. So I would expect, so this is great, it is a much different website. It's, um, and it, it, it's nice, it's clean, it's also early. You can tell it's early and I would mm -hmm. expect that the amount of function that you're going to deliver here is going to explode yeah. in the next 18 months. Absolutely. Talk about will. that a little bit. What can we expect? Well, yeah, so you've probably seen the partner slides that we have that show the very rich set of partner ecosystem that we've developed. Right. Uh, we feel like in this marketplace to let uh, both enterprises and small businesses pick what it is they want out of a, a cloud system, you, we, you can't do it by yourself. You have to do it with, with your, your partners. Um, so that plus the, the different um, infrastructure as a service offerings we'll have, the different platform as a service offerings we'll have, that'll all get incorporated into the website in, in uh, a marketplace offering that we're going to talk about later in the year. Um, but yeah, so I mean, we have some, we have some uh, information architecture stuff to still work on as we get, go from having six services to 26 services. But you know what we strive for is a clean look and feel like what you're looking at there yeah. on, on your laptop, something that, that speaks uh, to developers who, who care about that kind of stuff, right? Are you hearing a lot about DevOps from uh, your developer community? The whole concept we, of bringing operations and development together? Yeah, we, we hear some of that. Um, I would expect to hear more as, as this market continues to mature, though. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, that seems to be, you know, it's like the web giants lead the enterprise guys right. by five or seven years, whatever Absolutely. it is. Absolutely, yeah. You know, they're all sort of hopping on the DevOps bandwagon and showing right. hyper-productivity results, you know, and so. Um, good, so okay, so you announced uh, three months ago, you said. So where, where are you in terms of delivery? Are you actually delivering So we, um, we started a private beta with the public cloud last summer. Yep. Uh, we just announced public beta uh, earlier this month. Um, and we, uh, two of the services, the, the MySQL is a service, that's our first PaaS offering. Uh, that's in private beta, as is the, the block storage. Okay, so at, at what point, 
So it's in private beta. At what point will I be able to swipe a credit card and start buying these services? You can swipe a credit card and start today. buying so services today. So okay, great. So it's it's a live product. And, the live and product, I mean, like I said. Which is really the, geared for developers. The label right now is public beta, yeah. but but yeah, we and, and we have uh, discount price, uh, pricing right now given that we are in public beta. But you can swipe so a credit card, start to use it, and get to Early adopter right pricing, now. great. Exactly. Good. All right, Pete, well thanks very much for coming inside theCUBE. Thanks and, for having uh, me. Sharing your perspectives with us. Um, this is HP Discover, this is theCUBE. I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org, we're live. Keep it right there, we'll be right back. We've got uh, a number of guests coming up, we'll be here all day tomorrow, keep it right there.